Hi everyone, my name is Eric. I play clarinet with the Seattle Symphony. And the clarinet is part of the woodwind family, which includes the flute, the oboe, the bassoon, and, uh, oh yeah, and the saxophone. So, uh, you might be wondering how this works. So, what I have here on the end is a reed, and that reed, when I blow into it, vibrates, and it sounds something like this. This is without the instrument. And then when I put it onto the rest of the horn, you get something like this. So I'm going to start off with a piece of music that you might be familiar with. It's called Rhapsody in Blue by a composer named George Gershwin. So as you probably heard, that was influenced by jazz music, which the clarinet plays a really important part of in the history of the instrument. So to contrast with that piece, I'm going to play another jazz-inspired uh, piece by uh, one of the most well-known artists, composers, musicians, performers in history. His name was Duke Ellington. And this piece is called In a Sentimental Mood. And you're going to hear kind of more the sweet romantic side of the clarinet. Composers love using the clarinet to represent love and passion. So this one is called In a Sentimental Mood. So, along with jazz, you know, the clarinet is a very important instrument in orchestras like the Seattle Symphony. So, I wanted to play a piece uh, that, from an opera called uh, Tosca. And the clarinet here represents something, another thing that it does very well, which is solitude, sadness, and 
kind of this distance uh, in nighttime scenes or a lot of other kind of dramatic moments in pieces. So this is called uh, El Lucevan Le Stella. So, um, the clarinet is also a wonderful instrument that can be used outside of the orchestra or in front of the orchestra. We like to play a lot of solos and a lot of stuff and solos in front of the orchestra or solos alone. So, to represent some of that music, I wanted to share with you a piece by Clara Schumann. Um, and this piece represents another side of the clarinet, which is kind of this prideful excitement. And this is the third movement from her three romances for clarinet and piano. So a lot of you might be wondering when I started playing the clarinet, and it was probably around the same age as you are, around fourth grade. And I remember I went with my parents to go pick up the clarinet at the store, and we were renting it, but, uh, you know, you hold the clarinet like this. The left hand is on top, covering the holes there, and then the right hand rests on this thumb rest here on the bottom. But when I got home, I for whatever reason, just decided to put my left hand here, where it has no business going, and my right hand up here, and I learned how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb.
and you know, I have a slightly better embouchure now, but if it was a really, you know, I think when I first took it out, it was probably sounded something like this. So, you know, I'd like to think that I've gotten a little bit better in the 20 or so years that I've been practicing and, you know, learning how to play the instrument. So I wanted to show something that's a little bit more impressive. Um, it's by a composer named J.S. Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. And this is a uh, kind of a version of one of his violin pieces that uh, I'm going to play on the clarinet, obviously. So, um, some of the questions that I normally get about the clarinet are, how does it come apart? Um, you can see some of these joints here. So the clarinet comes in about five pieces. We've got the mouthpiece, like that. This is called the barrel. And then we have where most of the keys are. In fact, all the keys, the upper joint. And then the lower joint, and that's the bell, where most of the sound comes out. And, um, you know, a lot of string instruments, they make smaller versions for younger students who are just learning, but the clarinet doesn't really have that. Um, but by the time you're in fourth or fifth grade, you should be, your hand should be big enough that you can play it. And, um, once you start getting interested in it and you know want to find out more about it, there are so many different kinds of clarinets. There's the this clarinet, which is called the soprano clarinet, and then there's an alto clarinet, which is about twice the size and snakes around like this, and then there's the bass clarinet, which is twice the size of that, and it looks in a similar shape, snaking like this, and then there's the contrabass, which you know, basically just looks like an oversized paper clip. It's just wraps, wraps, wraps around, and it's made out of metal. And then there is a tiny clarinet called the Sopranino clarinet, which is about two thirds the size of this. And that one is similar to the piccolo, if you know what that sounds like, really high and uh, ecstatic sounding. And uh, this is perfect timing, actually. Another question I get is, how do you clean it? Because I need to clean out my instrument right now. And we have these swabs here. And if you look down here, you can see that condensation builds inside the clarinet here. And we just swipe this through. And that usually gets takes care of everything uh, inside so that the water doesn't get in the way. So before I play this last piece for you, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in to Meet the Clarinet with me today. And make sure that you stay tuned every week coming up, you're going to be able to meet a new instrument from the Seattle Symphony. And so a little bit more about this last piece I'm going to play. It's called Contra Danza, and it's by a Cuban composer, clarinetist, saxophonist named Paquito de Rivera. And it's one of my favorite pieces to play, it usually is played with piano, but I'm going to play it as a solo for you today. And if you feel like getting up and dancing, feel free.
Thanks guys, have a good week and we'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Amy from the Seattle Symphony Education and Community Engagement Team. I hope you enjoyed Eric's video and learning all about the clarinet. I'm here to help you make your own clarinet. There is a link to instructions and a template below. Feel free to pause the video while you gather your supplies and I'll be here when you're ready to put together your clarinet. Hi, let's make a clarinet. Here's mine. First, print off the clarinet template that you can find at the link below. Next, you can get some markers or crayons and color your clarinet. I colored my clarinet blue. You can also find some stickers or buttons and put them where you would put your fingers if you were playing the clarinet, just like this. Lastly, you can find some scissors or a helper with some scissors and cut out your clarinet. And there you have it, your own clarinet to play just like Eric Jacobs and the rest of the Seattle Symphony clarinet players. Oh.